just hammered that billy. <laughs> oh! I'm glad it's over because I'm sick of climbing this mountain. Well, it's confirmed our bags are in the United States still. How big is he? Just had a shot at just a freaking awesome ibex. He did show us the canyon that we were hiking up tomorrow. It looks pretty gnarly. I'm gonna pull my phone and translate. Did you see him draw that in the snow? the base camp this is we haven't even started hunting yet uh, on day five but uh, this morning we'll shoot um, and then once we're zeroed in made sure we're zeroed in uh, we'll get on horses Eric and I will separate at this point um, and ride up to a spike camp um, six hours in I guess uh, 12 13,000 feet but man this country is amazing. So, I've effectively put uh, my sleeping pad, my sleeping bag, my rain gear, and a couple other warm things in this. I'm gonna put this on the horse. And then I'm gonna carry everything I'm gonna be hunting in, obviously, in my pack. As you can see, I'm still kinda going through it here, but getting closer and closer to being dialed in. We, I mean, we had gear strung all over the place. How was breakfast? It's delicious. We need to give this guy a, a Xanax right now. Go ahead, calm down a little. I'm ready. Are you ready? When you go into battle, are you, you a little tensed up when you go into battle? Not me. Almost forgot ammo. Air is just stone cold. Battlefield. safe to say that we were too excited to sleep. We were up at like 5, 5.30 this morning, which was kind of stupid. Yeah, now, feeling a little jet lag now. Yeah, feeling but, a little jet lag, a little weird, like, you know, obviously my stomach's a little bit different. Eating new foods. Anyways, we're waiting for the, we have to wait for the guides to shoot. So we're, I think that it's kind of a test for us, uh, <laughs> for the guides. Just to see if uh, these guys. So, uh, the, People here are packing up food for us in a five day trip and we're waiting on guides to shoot. Yeah, speaking of, that's gotta be a guide. Today, two guides, Maza, you hunting. Yep. Shooting, guide see. Hmm. Good shooting, no good shooting. Go. Go. Hunting, yes. Basically what he's saying, once we confirm our zeros, we're good to go hunting, so. Should be an interesting day. I'm shooting on a little bit of a downhill slope, so it's kind of hard getting a good solid rest. That's why I put my vinyl harness underneath it, but I'm about two inches right. I'm gonna shoot one more. No, I got the jitters off me. It's hard when you got eight people watching you shoot. But I'm feeling good, I feel good. Dead Ibex, I don't care how far it is, it's dead. Falski. Oh! Ready? Yep. Dude, Dunzos. Alright, so I, fi I finally got it zeroed here. Um, now we're just gonna adjust it. It's at one, two, it's on three. So just so we know. All right, we just verified up to 660 with me. Now Nick's behind the gun and we're, he's gonna verify 660. Oh, crushed it, dude. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little nerve wracking being halfway, three quarters away, whatever you wanna call it around the world. And <laughs> you re-zero on your gun and in, in theory, well, you should re-zero your gun wherever you go, but come for you know that we're finally shooting the dial there. So waiting for the sheep herders, shepherds to get here, there guys that are taking us in, so Nick and I will separate here soon. So last night, I was told I looked like, looked like who? Who was it again? Aaron Paul? Yeah, yeah. Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad. And the uh, lady who owns this place, when you guys were out shooting, she was like, hey, can I take a picture with you? No. And so we came outside and, and we got like a <laughs> picture really? together because she was like, I, I need a picture, I have to show my friends. <laughs> you get a picture to validate her? 
Uh, she, it was on her that? phone, oh, so dang. we could ask her for it if, if you want. But or we could just take another. Yeah. Why don't you add? Well, you can ask her right now. Yeah. Natalia. Aaron Paul. Picture, <laughs> video, stand together. <laughs> <laughs> Pull out of <laughs> This is Natalia's crush. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got it. Thank you. Perfect. Atlichna. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we have these guys as whatever car this is maxed out. Bucket. Bucket. Russian blah blah. How do you say Ibex in Russian? Ibex Kyrgyz Teke. Teke. Kyrgyz Teke. Teke. Russian Kazo. 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 Teke in Kyrgyz and Kazo in Russian. Balshoi Kazo. Teke. How are you feeling? Stomach doesn't feel too great. I don't know. Can't tell what it is. But we'll see. Could be. Could be nerves. Could be a lot of I'm feeling pretty good now that the gun's zero. I mean, my fear right now is our freaking we got too much crap. <laughs> like gear and pack and the form yeah. of gear and packs and everything else. We aren't even bringing food, or we aren't packing our own food, and packs are still like 30 pounds or so. A lot of camera gear. Cold weather equipment, but should be good. These are guides, we're all loaded up, about to head out to the horses. These guys are all business, you can tell by the look on their faces. They don't freaking screw around. How are you feeling this? Super. <laughs> Does it look like it? Uh, so he's feeling all nauseous. Bubble guts, mm -hmm. or something like that. Bubble guts. Bubble guts. How's it going, Nick? Not good. Try to tough it out. <sighs> Check out these stirrups. A little more saddle than I thought we were gonna have. That's good. This one obviously is. The best of my knowledge this is where Nick's taking off from. He's not feeling very good. Hopefully, he starts feeling a little bit better. We're all just a little bit queasy. Man, I think if I took a nap, I'd feel better. I kind of shut my eyes there and kind of popped out of it a little bit. Did you? A little bit. I got it. I feel like I got a little bit diarrhea. I hope that's all it is. Good news is, this is way more saddle than I thought we were going to have. <laughs> Besides that one saddle over there, that's pretty bad. Oh. You're right, dude. <laughs> well, I think Nick finally hit his breaking point. He's sick. Poor sucker. Hopefully he gets feeling better here. Hopefully puking. Gosh. It's gonna help him feel better. This is the last place you wanna be nauseous and sick, so. Oh. No good. <laughs> oh, he's smiling big now. <laughs> now he's like, feeling good. Like just he, got the, he got the puke out of him. <laughs> right there, and now he's feeling better. I feel like I need to explain myself. <laughs> Was pretty nauseous here for about the last two or three hours, and then we've been driving. Um, a little Toyota here, bumpy road, and man, way out of it, not knowing what's going on. and finally stopped and drank some water and getting the horses and let a load off gallons of water it seemed like but feeling better now all right so our horses just took off down the road i mean i guess we're i'm not quite sure what we're doing here from t uh, I guess those were our horses too, so I guess we're getting back in the car and driving down there. So, there's our horses. 
Well, at this point, I'd like to be a little bit more intelligent and tell you exactly what the plan is here, but the language barrier is so severe that we don't really know, so. We're just kind of parking. I imagine we're gonna gather our gear. Nick's ahead of us in this car. These guys are herding the horses behind us, so. How you feeling there, big guy? A little better. At leech now. At leech now. And it's perfect. Yeah. Si. Bueno. <laughs> More? More? Um, he can... Okay. I think he wants me to put mine over there too, so put the camera down. Ruslan is lengthening my stirrups right now. Rifle. Good. Rifle. Bushka. 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 So my guide Ruslan gave him my rifle, so he's carrying my rifle. Isha. Isha. Feels a little weird not carrying my rifle, but that's okay. Here we go. This is about to be a adventure. Took us five days. Well, yeah, five days to get to this point. And we've got a six hour horse ride for them. Light sunset a little bit ago, and it is getting cold. I think they said we have about another hour to go in riding. Uh, I think we're about four already. Butt's getting sore. All right, wow, that was quite the ride in five, six hours. Uh, no major casualties, luckily. Chase did lose the lens cap on the camera, but um, could have been a lot worse. It's cold. Uh, unfortunately for me, I had my gar puffy packed away on the ride up, so I just <laughs> shiver, <laughs> get comfortable, and maybe start a fire. He he did show us the canyon that we were hiking up tomorrow, and it looks pretty gnarly. Big, big. Oh yeah, big. So basically, I was just getting the four one one on uh, judging ibex. We're gonna get up at five tomorrow and. Um, see if we can't get up that canyon and spot some big ones. Mm -hmm. Cookies. <clears throat> we got some sort of fish here. We got some bread and some cheese, and then the ramen's cooking there. So, eating like kings here at high elevation. Here's all the food we have to eat. Kofa. Next five days. Kofa. Coffee. Cheese. Fish. Cheese. Fish. Cookies. I'm gonna be eating like kings up here. All right, noodles are finally done. I'm gonna eat up enough like a warm meal after a long horse ride. Good. Thank you. Soup. Well, it's 5 a.m. We're gonna start hiking up the mountain in pursuit of ibex. Uh, that was an awful night. 
uh, I don't know if it's the food that's getting me, but I was up two or three times last, three times last night with the runs, and I'm worried that it's going to dehydrate me. I got a slight headache now, but I think it's more from lack of sleep. I feel good. I just, just feel like I have to poop. Not the way I wanted to start off the trip, but here's the first real hunting day. Uh, excited for that sun to come out, that's for sure. It's cold. <laughs> Tell me, kill my headlamp. Oh. That's steep, dude. You don't sleep when the diarrhea is catching up to me, man. I do not feel good. But I'm just gonna go slow and keep powering through, I guess. Translate, did you see him draw that in the snow? 115 centimeters? Yeah. <laughs> so he said 115 centimeter billy. It's about 45 inch billy. Sometimes it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's 115 plus. Now, what we know, it's Big. Big, big. Oh, that's a No problem. No problem. Yeah. Slide No problem. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Go. He just told them he'll uh, shoot out to 700 yards, no problem. And they were no problem, like, dude. wow. <laughs> Большой is on the other side. Ожанда. Yeah. Ожанда товар. Ну, такой же где-то. Такой же. Такой же. Got him. Did he walk over? Billy 
police went up and over, so we're gonna hike after him. So that's what we're doing. Our only water. We started yesterday with these bottles. So we've had about what, a quart since. Yeah, we haven't drank much. Since noon yesterday. Plus a cup, a cup of coffee. I think we're nuts for filtering this. Okay, a little update. Uh, Thursday morning now, and uh, we rode in for our first day of hunting yesterday. Probably rode four or five hours. I started having some stomach problems. I don't know if it's elevation sickness or what. Um, yesterday morning, and uh, I've been puking ever since if I eat or drink. I instantly puke. So, um, hopefully that gets a little better, but I think uh, the guides are going to wrangle up the horses and I'm gonna walk down and see if I can't spot something. Okay, we, we've been riding for 15, 20 minutes on the horses and uh, uh, the guide, uh, Juan, Juan spotted a big old herd of Ibex. Um, one of them is supposed to be 120, 70, 20 centimeters, so uh, 47, 48 inches. So uh, he went up ahead over there to go look at him and stayed with the guy. So looks big. Okay, he decided to get on the horses go up the valley and I, I don't know if I agree with that opinion but uh, uh, we're a half mile away from him and I think we're going to try to get across the canyon from him. We have a uphill wind, a bad wind so we're going to try to cut across this river and uh, get across and hopefully get within the shooting range. So back to where we kind of split up I, I found a, I that band of bachelor billies and there was a couple tanks in there. And I, I let the guys know, like, hey, I can shoot six, seven, eight hundred, nine, nine hundred yards, no problem. So we set up, and I think it was like 950 or something. And there's this giant Ibex over there. And I was kind of, I'm going to make up an excuse for myself. I wasn't 100%. The gun was brand new, and the barrel wasn't broken. So I, I wasn't 100% confident on my velocity and my speed. And I was nervous and anxiety, and I didn't fill up. So anyway, the guides are like, shoot it. And I'm looking. I'm looking at this country, right, with Chase. And I'm sitting here having this conversation with Chase. I'm like, Chase, if I kill that Billy over there, there's no way he's recoverable. It is not physically possible for a human being to get over there. No, it's okay. Walk. Walk. It's okay. Walk. And then they kind of signaled their two fingers walking and then pointed in the direction of how they would get to this Billy. I'm like, I am not going there. And Chase, Chase is an adventurous sucker. Yeah. Like, he's, he's, not, he's fearless. He's like, I'm not going over there. And it, it already had that snow and that grass, so I knew it was going to be sl slippery, and then it had all those cliffs. I'm like, I am not going over there. I'm like, if I kill this Billy, I'm not even going to get a trophy photo because they'll have him cut up, and they'll climb up there yeah. and get it. And yeah, climb up and bring it up. So yeah, and they're like, not really concerned about that stuff. No, but I we don't. are, right? Yeah, yeah. Because we, we come it's all the way it. across the world for this memory yeah. and this yep. adventure. Yep. Like, the one thing I wanted was some good, some good kill photos. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I pick out this super dark chocolate with the cream on his back, really? like just a yep. total stud. And I missed, and they went. And I was, I almost being relieved. Like, I'm so glad I missed. I'm so glad I missed. And they were like, they were like disgusted, right? They're like, this guy can't shoot that far. He's full of it. <laughs> yeah, so I missed, and they run off. And I was like, I just remember having so much anxiety thinking, those guys will die. So did you? I, those guys are going to die getting my billy. Oh, they can handle it. <laughs> they're crazy. They're crazy. They just live in the country, so they're pretty comfortable.
I just had a shot at. I think it was about 540 yards. And just a freaking awesome ibex. Curved all the way around. And uh, we'd, been, we'd been on them for a while. And they'd either been bedded with no clear shot or anything. And um, anyways, it looked like I'm at the last second there, they spotted us. Um, so he kind of pinned us down, so I kind of hurried up. I thought I had a good rest, but I think, I just didn't have a firm hold on the butt of my gun. I was just super steep, and I was sliding downhill. I actually, the guide was holding me at one point so I could slip. So anyway, it's freezing cold. Once the sun goes down, it just drops like crazy. We're going to camp, or I'm assuming set camp, so. Uh, they look like they just went across the hillside, so hopefully tomorrow morning they feed back down out here lower. It boggles my mind how many of these deadheads we run into. A broken snout is indicative of snow leopard kill. Did you move it? I'm done those more. Big. Forty-eight and a half. Wow. I'm good then. Yeah. This is a 115 here. So this is literally 80 yards from where the other one is. This thing just must be, snow leopard must live in this area and just wreaking havoc on these big billies. This would make a lot of sense why we haven't seen any here. They're always staying on the tops. I mean, he's heavy. Wow, what a day. Chase, I, think, I think it's safe to say that Chase and I are utterly spent and we get to do it again tomorrow. I felt like I was semi-delirious today, like I was up all night, didn't have any food this morning, had a little piece of sausage and bread and a little cheese today and a Snickers. Chase and I were plumb out of water, basically, and the guides were even drinking our water. I mean, it was pretty ridiculous. And we were fine with it, but it's, I mean, they were going up there in muck rubber boots, like Captain Insano stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Can't wait to see what tomorrow holds. All right, we don't know when the next time we're gonna see water, it's day two. So we're gonna hurry and filter as fast as we can. Yesterday, after we left water, we didn't see it again for about 12 hours, so we're not taking any chances today. <laughs> we're gonna bring more than three quarters of a liter a piece so that we hopefully don't run out.
Красавчик! Красавчик! It's over, baby. <laughs> All right, I just hammered that billy. <laughs> oh! I'm glad it's over because I'm sick of climbing this mountain. I've only done it two days. How are your hands? Dude, my hands are miserable. I just put on the bore over mitts and actually they're warming up pretty quick. Uh, dropped him in this place. It is cold. Very cold. Alright, we got the Ibex down here. Got a beautiful color. Coloring up top here. Let's hear Billy. Chase is getting ready to do his work. I don't know how you I don't know how you beat this backdrop right here. Like some of the most epic scenery that you'll ever find. Like these things live in the most austere of places. It's unbelievable. Chase and I are just sitting here in the sun. Just got some food. Waiting to cut the ibex up and kind of head out. I think we're. Kind of relaxing here on the sun on the mountain. It's like after the kill, it's like man, you can enjoy it a little bit more. Not to say that we didn't enjoy the whole journey to this point, but it's just a little bit more relaxing if that makes sense. So and also about thirty degrees warmer right here in the sun. Yeah, we're in some yellow grass. This is like Thawing the first yellow grass finally. I've seen. <laughs> Chase is falling out his feet. Got here. double socks, good boots. And I was still just. No, I'm since like six this morning. We just got done eating some. This is the cheese we eat. There's salami, a little bread. Pretty wild journey. doing his job mushrooming perfectly yeah weight retention is on point 200 grain ELDX morning the weight retention on these ELDX's from a Hornady are unparalleled you'll notice it doing what a bullet should do and that's mushrooming you don't want bullets to fragment and this is a perfect example of how a bullet should perform. So 200 grain ELDX out of a 300 Winchester short mag um, at 400 yards. This, in my mind, this is one of the trophies besides the animal itself, is just the bullet. And one thing that I've learned about these ELDXs is you'll always find them lodged for the most part. And I don't wanna say always, always, but on the most part, you'll find them on the opposite side of the hide, just right in there. And a lot of times if you run your hand, over that opposite hide, you'll be able to just cut it out and pull it out. Pretty cool. I just got done telling Chase that I didn't want to hike back this river bottom back to camp without a rifle. It's tradition for the guy to carry the hunter's rifle. I never had someone carry my rifle. It was kind of weird, but when in Rome, 
this is more than anything, this is probably the gnarliest, hardest terrain hunt I've ever done. The animals, there's, I don't want to say plenty of animals, but there was a plethora of animals, I guess. Um, but they, like I said earlier, they live in some of the most austere of environments. You know, cutting snow leopard tracks, wolf tracks, grizzly. I mean, this place is the um, most unforgiving place I've ever been. <laughs> I mean, from the, from the train and animals to the living conditions. I mean, I'm sure the food is great, but I mean, it has us all so sick. I, I didn't eat any uh, salami yesterday and I felt way better and I, they sat down for lunch and ate a bunch of salami and I instantly felt it um, hit me. I mean, Chase and I can't even trust a fart to save our lives because we're for fear that we'll poop ourselves. So, oh, it's crazy. Last thing I want to do is hold this camera up and talk. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just so exhausted. So, I mean, hats off to these Kyrgyz people. They are tough rubber boots. Burlap freaking bags in a way. I mean, they're hiking up the mountain. So essentially, one bottle of water in their burlap sack. Like, it's just absolutely insane what they do and how tough they are. You know, and they're not privy to some of the equipment and knowledge that we have in the States. I mean, here we are toting around with our XO packs, rifles, long range rifles, freaking Cryptek altitude. And they literally have surplus army gear. They double sock their rubber boots in the morning. Can't imagine putting my feet into those early in the AM and then traversing these mountains. I mean, Chase and I said it, we didn't want to go up the mountain another day without an animal, but we in reach Nick and Nick missed a big billy last night. I don't know how far he found him again. And one of his comments in the 160 some odd characters that you get within reach was this terrain is insane. So just goes to show you. <laughs> Gnarly. Horses. I mean, our buddy Yishan was gone for a good, I don't know, hour, hour and a half. I'm sure he, they just let him roam free. One of them's hobbled, and they just literally turn him loose. It's insane. So, we got camp all packed up here. We're just waiting for the horses now. And then we'll distribute the weight and saddle up. You ready for the long pack out, bud? Six hours? You just got free reign for two and a half days. And you gotta go back to work, huh? That sucks. Kyrgyz saddle blanket, right there. Here, come on, Alan. Come on. Let me hold the, uh, I can hold these reins for you. Saddling my horse here, holding the reins, just doing my part, just kidding. I don't know where to begin to saddle up these things. I mean, these are the stirrups. All right, so check it out. <laughs> We've got the Ibex. They're 
rigs are loaded to the brim. A little nervous on these horses. I hope we don't have any issues on the way out. We're not packed down the best and we've got a five hour journey. Here we go. Ranch Cowboys lagging behind a little bit. Kind of got it on the horse. Everything's riding surprisingly okay. These horses are tough. Packed out. Um, a lot more stuff than we came in with. They had all their tent sleeping supplies already up there. So now we got 150 pounds of meat, full cape, horns. So, pretty awesome experience to say the least. Once in a lifetime, never thought in a million years of my entire life that I'd be doing something like this. Pretty special moment for me. That was just one of the sketchiest horse rides of my life. Oh my gosh. We did it without any moon, without any headlamps or flashlights just relied on the horse. I mean, there were some spots that the trail was about this wide, I felt like something was washed out and it was cliff and straight down rocks and into the water. It was absolutely, absolutely terrifying. And from all the hiking we've been doing the last two days and then five hour horse ride on the way out, all downhill, my legs feel like they need to be lubricated or something. Like the joints. <laughs> I thought when I jumped off my horse that I was gonna collapse. Anyway, that was scary. That was truly scary. Um, one of my buddies that did this hunt probably two, three years ago said, you know, the country's fine, the people are fine, but the terrain will kill you. And that couldn't be more true. I mean, if you wanna come do this hunt, like it's absolutely insane. And you better plan on one of the hardest, most grueling hunts of your life. I mean, one day, in Kyrgyzstan is like 10 days in the Brooks Range. <laughs> and I did nine days in the Brooks Range. So not to say I'm tougher or not as tough as one. It's, it was just hard and maybe you could go a different drainage or a different route that won't be as taxing on your body and psyche, but this was hard. And <laughs> getting on these little ponies was just, Unbelievable. Man, our butts were puckered, puckered. And it was probably a good thing him and I couldn't see some of the stuff that we were going over because, holy cow. Not one of them guys had their lights on either. Insane, I'm just happy we made it out. All right, guys, thanks for watching episode two. It was an incredible hunt in unbelievable terrain. Be sure to watch the next episode where Nick gets another crack at an absolutely troll of an ibex for this series we're giving away the rifle components starting right now so a trigger tech trigger a proof carbon barrel a mountain light weight stock from proof also and some hornady 300 prc precision hunter ammo enter this giveaway click in the link description from there you will have a couple of ways to enter giving you multiple entries to win this giveaway the winner will be picked in the following weeks to come good luck subscribe like leave a comment hit the link in the description enter the giveaway good luck everyone Hey guys, just a reminder, I'm sending groups every single fall to Kyrgyzstan with this exclusive out outfitter. I have a couple spots available for 2021. I have one group available for 2022, so one group is completely booked out for 2022 already. Hit me up on Instagram, DM me. I'm happy to send you details, talk through any of this stuff. It's way more affordable than you think. With a little bit of saving and discipline, you can be flying to Kyrgyzstan. Flights are pretty cheap. Be sure to enter the giveaway. Thanks for watching.